Hello faithful viewers and welcome back to another review. This time we're looking at the Black Series Ahsoka series, General Hera Syndulla. But before we look at the figure in question, let's take a quick look at the packaging. So this is the standard windowed Black Series packaging that we're all familiar with at this point, with the mural artwork on the side. And we can see that is a very good representation of Hera, as she was portrayed by Mary Elizabeth Weinstead in the Ahsoka series fantastic casting by the way i've got to say everybody in that show is casted sublimely it is uh this kind of like this blue color for the ahsoka line general hera on the front there and coming on to the back we've got the same artwork of hera and the bio reads set after the fall of the empire ahsoka follows former jedi knight ahsoka tano as she investigates an emerging threat to a vulnerable galaxy no mention of Thrawn or any of the wider plot details or anything really about Hera herself there. Kind of a generic bio, a little bit disappointed in that. Nothing else on the side and that's the box. So taking a look at the figure in more close-up detail, this is a very nice mould. My only problem is with my figure here and the face sculpt. Uh, now a lot of the versions of this figure that I've seen other reviewers look at, they've had really nicely painted faces and everything. But I don't know if you can tell, with mine, she looks either slightly drunk or half asleep. And it's just unfortunate that the options available to me when I picked up this figure were limited. There were only two versions of Hera that were available at Forbidden Planet, where I got her from. It was either this one or one that looked like she'd had a slight stroke. A lot of the versions that you'll see of reviewers look at, the eyes are a little bit bigger and thus they give a better likeness to the actress. Um, but this... It's, it's not the best, but it's fine. From certain angles, actually, she looks really good. If you look at her, uh, say, from this angle, just trying to get her correct. There you go. That's a really good likeness to her, but just it's unfortunate that full on, yeah, she doesn't look all together with it. But apart from that, you know, beautifully sculpted head. I love the goggles on top there. Uh, you've got her Liku trailing down her back, and they are nicely, you know, tattooed i suppose they're not actually tattoos they're just twi'lek you know biology patterns like the tog rooters the stripes and their liku same thing we can see a nice emblem on the back of her flight jacket there uh, and you can see the rebellion starbird symbols on her sleeve well at least on that sleeve there on this sleeve uh, it's probably something to do with like the New Republic. I don't quite know all of my Star Wars symbols off the top of my head, admittedly. So I'm not sure what that one specifically is, but I imagine it's something to do with the New Republic. Uh, speaking of the New Republic, you've got her rank on her little jacket there. So that is uh, that's obviously the rank for a general because that's what she is and then panning down from the green skin that she has, you can see a, a simple kind of top uh, underneath the, the, the nice bomber jacket thing we got going on here. Uh, kind of like, it's not fur, obviously, but in reality it would be, but they've captured that quite well as well. Nice gloved hands. You've got her pistol, which is a holdover from Rebels. And then coming down, you've got orange flight pants. Uh, you've got a nice holster on this belt, which is sat at a angle upon her hips, which gives her quite a nice bit of individuality. Uh, now this holster, interestingly, does have um, a little flap there which kind of pegs in, which is nice. The pants themselves have some nice detailing, you've got kind of like this ribbed effect going on on the knees, uh, and you've also got these pockets which are sculpted in there, they don't open of course, and then you've got some sturdy black flight boots on the bottom there. So overall, the sculpting and detailing on this figure is really nice, just buy beware when you're getting your figure you may have a slightly off face sculpt like I've got. As for the gun, we can see it is a very simple sculpt, all things considered. You've got your silver on top and a black handle and trigger. Uh, but there is some accents of like a bronzish gold on the side, on both sides, in fact. So I appreciate that little touch. And in terms of the holster, what we want to be doing is just trying to get that up there. And it does slip in there nice and securely, trying to get that flap out of the way. Just push that in. It does hold it very nicely. Why you really need that, I don't know, but it's fair. 
so that's the thing you can do. In terms of articulation then, Hera's head is on a ball joint, so she actually can achieve 360 degrees of rotation in an exorcist twist. Unfortunately though, it's one of these figures with the new kind of neck system, which is an independent joint. So when you move the head, the neck kind of gets moved out of place. So, oh, and her Liku are getting stuck on her flight jacket. That's a thing. So just be wary about that. And to that point, you've got that individual articulation for the neck there. I don't think I really like that on new figures. I don't see the point of having your head being able to articulate and then the neck itself being able to do the same thing. I like the posability it gives in terms of looking down that far and well not really looking back all that much at all but just the independent swivel of that I just find really really peculiar. In terms of the shoulders they can rotate 360 degrees like that. She can move her arm out only about that far before it gets stuck on the shoulders of the flight jacket there. She has a butterfly joint so she can move the shoulders of hers forward and backward like that. In terms of the elbows there is 360 degrees of rotation there and plus a good 90 degree bend also. In terms of the wrists she's got 360 degrees of swivel and then on this wrist I'm just peering over to see uh, she's got in and out rotation like that and same thing on the other wrist. I cover them independently because on some figures it can differ. You could have one that goes up and down and then you could have one that goes in and out. It's in and out on both for her. In terms of an ab crunch, only about that far. In terms of limbo, not that much either. In terms of a waist swivel, um, it is there, it's quite tight. Uh, I think she's capable of doing about 360 degrees, but I'm not going to push it because I just don't want to break anything. In terms of her legs, she's got a forward kick of a good 90 degrees. In terms of a back kick, she doesn't really have anything, so that's realistic, I suppose. In terms of a spread, she has a beautiful spread. In terms of upper leg rotation, there is nothing, which um, is a bit surprising considering that a lot of modern black series do still include the, uh, the thigh swivel. In terms of the knee, she's got 360 degrees of rotation at the knee, and she also has a good 90 degree or so bend right there. And then in terms of the ankles, she's got massive ankle pivot on both and then tiltage of up and down just like that. Although I was expecting it to be somewhat, okay, there we go, somewhat ratcheted. I mean, it's not a ratchet, but there is like a point where it clicks past notably. Uh, so backward, it's definitely there. Be sure to grab your figure as low down and on the articulation point as much because if you try and like grab it at the toes you might risk stressing the joint and breaking it. So overall articulation hair is pretty good. She's very standard for black series except she's missing the crucial thigh swivel. So that kind of puts her at a slight disadvantage and also with the Liku there, the kind of get in the way of the head articulation, although not that much to be honest. In terms of a size comparison, here is Hera next to fellow Ghost Crew member Sabine Wren. Both of these figures are from the Ahsoka line. Speaking of Ahsoka, here she is. Uh, this is the new version of Snips that has come out representing her Clone Wars Seasons 3 through 5 appearance. Sticking with the Star Wars Rebels theme, this is Hera next to the Grand Inquisitor as he was portrayed in the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show. Comparing Hera to your average deluxe class Transformer, here she is next to the Transformers Prime 1st Edition RC. And of course, with our Marvel Legends comparison, here she is next to Far From Home Mysterio. So there we go, that has been our look at the new Black Series Hera Syndulla from the Ahsoka line. I do like the figure overall, I, it's just a shame that obviously mine has kind of like the sculpting paint defect with the face. But that aside, it is a very decent figure. It's missing a crucial articulation point uh, compared to a lot of other Black Series figures, but you know, it's forgivable considering that the overall sculpt of the figure is really, really nice indeed. And it's just a pleasure to have a figure that represents Hera in my collection because she was one of the standout characters in Star Wars Rebels and continues to be a standout character in the Ahsoka show and in whatever media the character is introduced into. Such a strong character and definitely recommended that you pick up this 
figure. Um, if you're not as hardcore about the specific nitty gritty points like I am, um, then you'll have a blast of this figure. Absolutely. It's a beautiful mold all over and it's just really, really nice to look at. So thank you everybody so much for stopping by and checking out this review. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and share it around to help out the channel. And until the next time, see you all later.